A minute ago we were talking about the risks of ulcers after the surgery, and that's one of our biggest risks. Three to five percent of our patients are going to have an upset stomach or an ulcer or gastritis or something like that. And even in clinic yesterday, we had a young woman who was about three or four years post-op who's had some problems with indigestion. And she's had an endoscopy and they saw a little bit of erosions. And so over the next couple of months, we're going to modify and fiddle with some antacids with her. Besides an, uh, ulcers, the other big complication that we see in our patients is low iron, iron deficiency anemia. But there's a couple of interesting tricks that tell us something about the anemia and how to treat it. We've done about 4,000 people uh, with the surgery. We know 15% are men, and anemia doesn't happen in our guys. And when we say anemia, iron deficiency anemia occurs in our patients, our female patients, in almost 5%. So that's 1 in 20, so pretty high. On the other hand, it's important to know that anemia happens in women in America who don't have my surgery at a rate of around 3%. So now we have a couple of pieces of information that maybe can go back and help us explain what's going on. Got something to do with being a woman. And what do we do, what do women do every month where they deposit some iron back? instead of taking it in. That monthly menstrual cycle is blood loss and blood is iron. So what we know is that our women get anemia. Women who don't have surgery are pretty commonly getting anemia. And so when people call me or ask about anemia, the first thing I say is go see your gynecologist. Because if you think of your blood as being a bucket that we want to fill with iron, it's hard to fill up the bucket if there's a hole in the bottom. So the very first thing to think about when you're thinking about anemia for our patients is to consider and think about the amount of blood you, use, you lose in the menstrual cycle. So if you want to prevent anemia, kind of your question, mm -hmm. you want to look to the amount that you're losing in addition to the amount that you're taking in. Now you can always take a little bit of extra iron and there's a lot of iron in our recommendations when we tell you to take three vitamins a day. That's a moderately high dose of iron if you take what we recommend. But a real important thing is to review as the months go by the amount of blood loss in your menstrual cycle and sometimes visit to your gynecologist to, uh, to have some uh, estrogen therapy can decrease the amount of blood that you lose in the monthly cycle and that can help prevent or treat the anemia. Okay, that doesn't answer my question. I had a hysterectomy 10 years ago. Okay. So I'm still having anemia issues without okay. the monthly blood loss. Okay. Now, you had a hysterectomy 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and since that time, you've been seeing the doctor about anemia? Mm -hmm. Well, not really. It's just been borderline, but okay. I haven't really done anything about it because it hasn't been urgent, right. and the lupus makes me tired anyway, so... But if it gets bad, will I know? Because I'm always tired. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, one of the, the key symptoms of anemia is tiredness. And so if you're always tired, then it's going to be difficult to tease out the two. So then, of course, a blood test is the thing to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, oral supplementation will sometimes fix anemia. If that doesn't, then we have kind of a wonderful new development that not every doctor is familiar with around the country yet. And in fact, there was recently a, an editorial in the New England Journal that not enough, not enough doctors realized the change in medical practice. Mm -hmm. um, we now have intravenous iron. Okay, We used to have intravenous iron. It was called iron dextran, and it was pretty darn dangerous. If you got that, uh, there was a high risk that you would have a, a, a reaction that sometimes was lethal. So most of us who grew up in medicine 10 and 20 years ago, when we think of intravenous iron, we go, yikes. I mean, it's scary. Nowadays, um, they have new types of iron, which are uh, different molecular combinations, and so it's very safe. And in fact, dialysis patients because they're constantly putting their blood out through the plastic pipes of the dialysis machine, are always getting anemic, always losing iron, and they're always getting iron intravenously. 
so that now we have a huge experience of giving out intravenous iron. And we know now it's real easy to do. So if you have slightly low iron, the first thing to do is see your gynecologist, which you've done. Mm-hmm. That's taken care of, right. So <laughs> the second thing to do is take extra oral iron and then check your iron levels. And if they are not up to snuff, then I would discuss with your doctor taking a course of intravenous iron, which is sometimes two, three, or four days. And it is completely transforming. For those of you who get in this situation, if you get weak and tired from the iron deficiency anemia, it is stunning just how much better you feel after you get the iron infusion. This is, this is the infusion they talk about on the Yahoo group where they right. go once for six hours or every day for eight days for an hour. Or Something, eight. right. Okay. And what we find is, see, a lot of the doctors who are giving it are not familiar with the dose and things like that, so they're still a little kind of squeamish about it. But if you get a big slug of iron, it's like going from weak, tired, to magically jumping up and down. It's just a complete transformation. In fact, sometimes as the blood starts to pump out, you can have a headache and you're just like, wow, you know, it's just a tremendous change in energy level. And so uh, if you have any iron deficiency anemia now at all that doesn't correct itself with oral iron supplementation, you really should investigate that because that's new stuff. And the difference between low iron and the dragging, tired, weak feeling that you get. And normal iron is just like night and day. It's like sleeping and being awake. And on the oral supplements, what dosage do you recommend? Is that a malabsorption drug or a malabsorption? Yes, it is. It's one that that we don't absorb. And so there's no magic number on that. It's it's what we call in medicine, you give to effect. In -hmm. other words, you give it until you get enough. So you can take iron all day long. The thing is that iron is poorly absorbed, so you want to take some iron. But if you're not up on your iron, the thing to do now is realize you need to be kind of proactive and go get some intravenous iron. So if your iron is not great, get some intravenous iron, especially if you've had this history of tiredness and which you put off on lupus. It may be that it was just this low iron for 10 years that you never caught up on. Because may I ask the reason for the hysterectomy? Uh, endometriosis. Okay. Did you have heavy periods before that? Yes. No. So you may have had a lifetime of anemia. Mm-hmm. You may live be living at you know only you know 50 to 70 percent of your real capacity because you haven't got the iron that you need. And so it it could be a tremendous transformation of all the things you do while you're down here. This piece of piece of advice might be the most important. Yeah. Great. Because iron is just like the electricity that runs the body. Without it, you're weak and tired. It completely transforms our patients who get the low iron. And if you listen in on the mailing list, Mm -hmm. people just talk about it. It's it's stunning. You just see them go from, hey, let's go shopping. You know, I mean, it's just it's just like turning on a light switch. My wife's had it done. Oh, really? It's amazing. I'd love to feel like that. I've never felt like that. When she went to the hospital for that, and they actually, you know, did it more immediately at the hospital. And when she got home, I mean, the, it was amazing. Just and and I could see in her the difference. Yeah, because you get you get a little redder. I mean, you know, you get from that, you know, kind of, and you just like, dun dun dun. It's uh, it's like Popeye the Sailor Man. You know, <laughs> really? remember that when we were kids? You know. Yeah, it's a it's a tremendous difference. Of course, the idea of eating spinach was the iron in the spinach. Right. You know, that was the the theory behind it. So yeah, it, it's a huge important thing. It's important for all of you because if you notice this tiredness and weakness, investigate that. Get a blood test and check your iron. It's just so remarkable, and it's a disease of women in America with or without the surgery.